All right, this is the second half of your warm up pages. Okay, so let's take a look at number four. It says find the seventh term of the geometric series or sequence. Now we know that our first term is the square root of two. So if you're a person that likes to make a table, you can. Um, so this is just gonna tell you my first term is the square root of two. Okay, and I know my common ratio is the square root of two. So what you could do is you could go through and multiply out second term, multiply this every single time, multiply by the square root of two to get your next number, um, but that would that's gonna take a lot of work, right? So let's go ahead and use our formula. Remember our formula, our general formula, a sub n, is equal to your first term, okay? And our first term in this case was the square root of two. Okay, and then our common ratio, we're given our common ratio is the square root of two, all raised to the n minus one. That doesn't change. So we're looking for the seventh term in our series. Okay, so in my table, in the, it's in the seventh position. So when I write a sub seven, that means it's in the seventh position. I'm gonna do the square root of two times the square root of two times seven minus one, raised to the seven minus one. Okay, let's simplify this. Now, this right here is the square root of two to the six. So that basically means you're writing out the square root of two six times. Okay, so basically each of these square roots cancel and you're left with two times two times two, which is equal to eight. And you can do that on your calculator if you want to also. Um, so a sub seventh, my square root of two comes down. The square root of two to the six is gonna be eight. So my final answer is eight times the square root of two. So if you're a person that likes it in the table, you should have ended with eight times the square root of two, okay? All right, let's take a look at number five. So find the 50th term in the arithmetic sequence. So in this case, making a table would be kind of challenging um, just because you don't really wanna write out 50 terms. So you definitely wanna use your formula here. So this is your first term, your second term, and your third term. I found it, since we know it's arithmetic, we know we're adding or subtracting to get to the next term. I would write each of these out so they have a common denominator. All right, so one half, your common denominator is six. One half becomes three six, one third becomes two six, and one six stays as one six. Now that's easy to see. What you're doing is you're subtracting one six each time. So that's gonna tell me that my common difference, okay, is one six. So now I know my first term is one half and my common difference is negative one six. Now remember it's negative because I'm subtracting. So once I write my formula, my first term was one half, my common difference is negative one six um, times n minus one. So to find the 50th term, we're just gonna go ahead and plug in 50 because that tells me that's my 50th position in the sequence. Um, one half minus one six times 50 minus one. Now you can do this on your calculator, okay? So just make sure that you type it in exactly how you see it. I would maybe type it in like this, um, or type it in as one half, make sure you put that in parentheses, minus 49 over six in parentheses, and that is going to give you negative 23 over three. Okay, and remember if it gives you a decimal, Okay, so if you end up with a decimal answer, so negative 23 divided by three, there's your decimal. Remember if you hit math, okay, enter, enter, that will put it back to a fraction. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at number six. Let's see how you did on this one. So find the explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence. So we know we're adding or subtracting each time. All right, so now these are a little bit trickier. I have two plus pi, three plus three pi, and four plus five pi. So let's actually look at these separately. How did I go from two to three to four? Well, every single solitary time, what I'm doing is I'm adding one. All right, so I did two plus one to get three, three plus one to get four. Now, how did I get from pi to three pi? How did I get from three pi to five pi? Well, the pi portion, every single time, I'm adding two pi. So to each of these, I'm adding one plus two pi to get to my next term. So that's actually gonna be my common difference, all right? So we have a sub n, my first term was this two plus pi. 
okay, plus your common difference, which was 1 plus 2 pi times n minus 1. So let's just simplify this one because this is a little bit ugly the way it is. Um, let's distribute 2 plus pi um, ends up giving you plus n plus 2 pi n. Okay, so basically what I'm just doing is I'm distributing and then I have minus one and minus two pi. That's just distributing this portion right here. Um, okay, so then let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So first of all, we have n plus two pi n. All right, those aren't really like terms, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with them. Okay, then you have your number values. You have your positive two and your negative one, so that becomes a positive one. And you have your positive pi and negative two pi, so that's a negative pi. To simplify this further, you can actually factor out the n here, so this becomes 1 plus 2 pi. Okay? All right, and just make sure when you factor out the n for this first one that you put that 1 there, because if you don't put that 1 there, then it's incorrect. So you need that 1 as a placeholder. All right, so after this, we'll get started with our lesson.